Most drones are designed for smooth flying and capturing cinematic footage, but what happens when you push them to the absolute limit? Today, I'm going to be testing how much the DJI Mini 3 Pro can lift and see if it can carry various weights and even its own weight and beyond. Now, this isn't something which is recommended to do at all. I mean, the Mini 3 Pro isn't designed to lift anything more than itself. There's a risk of wearing out the motors and overheating the battery, but for those curious about real life performance, let's jump right in. All right, I've lined up a series of various objects weighing from almost nothing, gradually increasing in weight up to the drone's own weight and even more. Each round, an object will be attached to the drone's body by the same piece of string throughout the entire test, and I'll be rating the drone's lifting performance out of five in each round. To keep things fair, I'll measure each weight with a precise digital scale. Would it be able to lift a second Mini 3 Pro? Will it even get off the ground? Let's start with a very lightweight object, like this mini hamster figure. It weighs 18 grams. Let's see how the drone handles an object this light. Now, there's no expectation that 18 grams will significantly impact the drone's flight. However, it's important to note that adding any payloads to the drone would push its takeoff weight to over 250 grams. In some countries, you need extra registrations to be allowed to fly. As you can see, the drone has no problem flying with an 18 gram load. It hovers just fine, and even when the drone flies around, there's no difference to the drone's stability. However, when the drone decelerates, it's slightly noticeable that the drone seems to keep moving for a very short distance with this load attached. This is of course not really a problem though, so the drone easily passes the first round with a 5 out of 5 score. Moving on to the next object, I have a roll of white tape which weighs 45 grams. This is more than double the weight of the hamster figure, but still very lightweight. So the drone takes off just fine. Let's see how capable it is of flying around. Once again, no major problems with flight. The drone is still maneuverable and doesn't seem to struggle at all. Now, if I switch the flight mode into sport mode, let's see if a sharp acceleration will make any difference. So clearly, when dealing with fast accelerations and braking, the drone does seem to almost float off course slightly with the tape attached. However, this still doesn't really pose a significant risk to flight, so the drone passes round 2 with a 4 out of 5 score. Alright, so now I have a much heavier object which is a twisty Pyraminx puzzle. It weighs 81 grams, so once again nearly double the weight of the previous object. The total weight of the drone is now about 330 grams, so we can start to expect some changes in the drone's stability. When taking off, you can hear how the drone's propellers are having to work much harder by the change in sound. The drone still seems to be flying around quite stably, but the load is moving around quite a lot and each time the drone is having to compensate for this additional movement. Let's see how the drone handles an acceleration. This time, it's much more noticeable that the drone is impacted by accelerations with the Pyraminx attached to it. When braking, the drone shifts about a metre and a half further than where it was supposed to stop. This could potentially pose a risk to flight because the pilot would need to take the extra braking distance into account when flying. Still pretty stable flight, so the drone passes with a 4 out of 5 score. Now moving on, the first object over 100 grams is this green apple. It weighs 115 grams. It'll be interesting to see how much more the flight is affected by a load of this weight. Once again, the difference in noise can be heard between regular flying and flying with a load. Taking off is okay, although the drone does jolt quite a bit when lifting the apple. Maneuverability of the drone now starts to decrease slightly, since each movement the drone takes seems to be amplified because of the load. Still manageable for the drone though, so let's try an acceleration. But of course, make sure to tie the object to the drone properly, or otherwise... Now, as the drone accelerates with the apple, it makes the apple swing significantly. This means that when it decelerates, the drone itself also swings around with the load. This is definitely much more riskier to flight, because now the drone's movements start to be unpredictable. 
Still capable of flying, but with decreased stability. The drone moves on to the next round with a 3 out of 5 score. Now the drone faces a potato, which weighs 147 grams. Let's see if the drone manages to get off the ground. So, taking off with the potato significantly impacts flight immediately. You can see that when the drone begins lifting the object, it shifts towards it while ascending. You can also clearly hear the difference in noise the props make when lifting it. You can see that even when hovering, the drone is a bit more unstable with the potato attached. During flight, the maneuverability of the drone once again decreased. When flying around, the drone is affected by the load quite a bit. You can see that as it flies to the side, the drone tilts and still continues moving. Let's see if the drone manages a sharp acceleration. Similar to the apple, the potato makes the drone swing around when speeding up and slowing down. It's clear that the potato makes the drone really quite unstable, not to mention the fact that the props are having to spin much faster. Flying with a load of this size would also make the battery drain much faster. The drone is still capable of flying, but with decreased stability and maneuverability. Once again, 3 out of 5. The next object is a metal tea tin, which weighs just about 200 grams. A significant increase in weight here, and this is the point I'd start to expect the drone to have bigger problems when taking off. Straight away, you can hear that there's a big difference in noise from the propellers. The drone is having to work much harder to hover, which means that the props are also spinning so much faster too. The drone still manages to fly around, but it's evident that it's struggling a lot. Even while hovering, the drone is quite unstable. As the drone flies to the side, the load also starts swinging around a lot, which also drags the drone with it. Maneuverability here is without a doubt heavily impacted, but let's see what happens during accelerations. Like before, the drone speeds up without major problems. However, when it comes to slowing down, the braking distance is much larger. The T10 swings around quite a lot, and the drone swings around with it too. This would pose a real problem to flight, because not only does the drone require much greater distance to stop, but it also begins to jump up and down. With 200 grams, stable flight can't really be achieved at all, which is why this gets a 2 out of 5 score. Alright, now it's time for what you've been waiting for. The drone's own weight, 249 grams. For this, I'm going to use a small notepad which weighs just about the drone's weight. Will this be the ultimate limit? Let's find out. As the drone begins to lift the notebook, the propellers begin to spin much faster which can be heard very clearly. You can see that even when taking off, the drone already shifts to the side as it ascends from the ground towards the notebook. The drone is, however, still capable of flying around, but it's not very stable at all. When the drone slows down, the extra braking distance is a minimum of about 2 meters, sometimes 3, and if it were to fly faster, even more. The load swings around, dragging the drone side to side even more forcefully than with the other objects. Now, clearly the drone struggled with the notebook. It was very difficult for the drone to be able to compensate for the load's weight and its extra movement, and barely managed to hover. The drone only gets a 1 out of 5 score. But this clearly is not the maximum thrust the drone can produce, so let's really push the drone to the absolute limit and attach something even heavier than the drone itself. I've got a coconut which weighs 309 grams. It'll be interesting to see if the drone is even capable of taking off with such a load. Initially, the drone's propellers begin to spin at normal speed, and then they speed up rapidly. Surprisingly, the drone actually leaves the ground with the coconut attached. The takeoff weight is 560 grams, so it shows that the drone is capable of lifting more than its own weight. It's pretty unbelievable that the drone manages to hover even with such a heavy load attached. 
Despite this, the drone is actually uncontrollable. Here, I push the left control stick up to the maximum, however the drone remains in place. The drone is also unable to fly forwards or backwards, which is a really unexpected result. A few moments later, the drone drops to the ground with the coconut by itself. There was no manual input telling the drone to do this, so it seems that maybe the drone isn't capable of flying with the coconut. The drone leaves the ground for a second again but bounces back to the floor. Now the drone isn't even flying, it's just dragging the coconut across the floor. Eventually I decided to land, but for some reason the drone was still uncontrollable and didn't let me move it to the side to avoid the coconut when landing. I had to land somehow though, so when I did bring it down, the propellers got caught in the string. So if you ever try something like this yourself, be careful when landing and try not to get the propellers caught in the string. Anyway, even though the drone was capable of lifting the coconut, it was completely uncontrollable after about 15 seconds of flight. This shows that the maximum load the drone can carry while still being able to fly normally is definitely less than 310 grams. Since the drone wasn't capable of a normal flight with the coconut, this one gets a score of 0 out of 5. Well, these are all very interesting results, but we still don't know the absolute maximum thrust the drone is capable of pulling. To find this out, I filled a big glass bottle with water to make sure the drone is unable to lift it. I then placed it on the scales and turned them on to show zero. When the drone pulls upwards, the weight will be shown as negative and this would be the thrust the drone is pulling. So let's start up the motors and see what happens. Listen out for the propeller noises too. Well, that was intense. At one point, the drone was able to pull an unbelievable maximum of 498 grams of upwards thrust. I definitely didn't expect the Mini 3 Pro to be capable of pulling twice its own weight. But of course, this is only a demonstration of how much thrust the propellers can pull while not actually flying. If a load of 498 grams was attached, the drone wouldn't be capable of lifting such an object, let alone being able to fly. It was also interesting that the drone pulled 498 grams of thrust for only about a split second before the value went down to about 450, and then even lower to 400. There was no change in controller command, so the drone decided to do this automatically. Another interesting thing is that the controller showed a strong wind warning when the drone was pulling its maximum thrust. So, probably, the wind warnings are most likely activated when the props are turning faster than usual. So that concludes this lifting test on the DJI Mini 3 Pro. It just goes to show that the Mini 3 Pro is an incredibly powerful drone capable of flying relatively stably with its own weight attached. We saw that as you increase the weight of the attached load, the harder it was to control the drone and also the more unstable the flight was. Also, during sharp accelerations and braking, the object began to swing, oftentimes pulling the drone along with it. We even saw it lift the coconut, which weighed 309 grams, which was really surprising. However, the drone wasn't able to fly properly with such a load attached. Instead, it hovered for about 15 seconds, ignoring controller commands, and then proceeded to land. It isn't surprising that two full batteries were drained during this test. The propellers had to spin much faster than they ever would have had to during a regular flight. So I hope you enjoyed this lifting test, because I definitely did. And if you did find this video interesting, then please let me know by clicking the thumbs up down below. Also, if you want to see more videos like this one, then please consider subscribing. It would be greatly appreciated. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.